Centripetal and Centrifugal Forces. Hello everyone, today we're going to talk to you about centripetal and centrifugal forces. First, let's start off with the basics. A centripetal force is a force or attitude that tends to unify people and enhance support for a state. Looking at the word centripetal, we can see petal as part of the root, so we can see different centripetal forces as petals of a flower. Some centripetal forces include nationalism, cultural homogeneity, good transportation communication, and a compact state. A centrifugal force is a force or attitude that tends to divide a state, the exact opposite of a centripetal force. Some centrifugal forces include cultural heterogeneity, irredentism, multinationalism, and proruption, elongation, and fragmentation. Okay. So now that we've got the basics down, let's go explore some examples around the world. Allie, where should we go first? Hmm, how about Denmark? Alright, well off to Denmark we go! So here we are in Denmark! Wow, such a peaceful city! Yes, Denmark is bound by many centripetal forces that keep it together, making it peaceful. In fact, over 90% of Denmark's population are ethnic Danes, making it a nation state. Wow, that's a lot of Danish people! Yeah, and Denmark makes sure to prioritize gender equality, so that makes everyone happy. Also, Danes ride bikes almost everywhere they go, especially in Copenhagen, where we are now. Over 50% of Danes ride bikes to school or work, keeping the environment clean and healthy. I wish America cared that much about our environment. No kidding. Okay, so I think we've pretty much covered Denmark. Where do you want to go now? Iceland! Okay, but we'll have to get some warm clothes on. Ah, oh, there we go. It's a lot prettier than I thought it would be. Yes. Iceland is a very peaceful country like Denmark has some centripetal forces that bind it together. Being isolated from other countries gives it very little net in and net out migration. It also maintains the sixth highest GDP in the world and the highest life expectancy for women. It's even the only country in NATO with no armed forces. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So now that we've seen some peaceful places, it's time to see some, well, not so peaceful ones. Alright, off to Northern Ireland. So here it's not so nice. Ever since the Republic of Ireland became independent in 1922, there's been some issues. The northern part of Ireland are majority Protestants, and the rest are majority Roman Catholic. So when the Republic of Ireland became independent, the northerners stayed loyal to Great Britain. Many shootings and fires have broken out near the wall, which is a barrier between the northern Protestants and southern Roman Catholics, and many innocent people have been killed. Often protests on both sides have led to violence. Okay, let's get out of here quick. Alright, but we have one more stop before the end of our trip. Off to Quebec. So, here we are. Our last stop. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Oh, come on, Alan. Get up. We're almost done. Okay. Here we are in Quebec, the mainly French-speaking province of Canada. French Canadians, also known as Francophones, make up the largest minority with 6.7 million people. Francophones felt outnumbered by the Anglophones, English speakers, and felt like they deserved some rights. In 1993, Francophones overwhelmingly voted for a pro-independence party for the first time. To keep the country together, Canada used devolution. Devolution is the transfer of delegation of power to a lower level, especially by the central government. To help stop the centrifugal forces within the country, the central Canadian government used devolution by helping Quebec to transition into a mainly Francophone population and giving them seats in the house. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's go back home. Ali, I don't remember there being penguins in Frisco. Emily, I don't think we're in Frisco anymore.